Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be talking about some top classroom PE games that you can do in your school. So the first one we're going to focus on is a game that you can do which is associated to dance. It's a really good game, very relevant to what you do within your lessons and we call this replace the beat. Okay? So in dance we like to count to eight. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you repeat, and then you repeat it. Okay, so once the children know how to count to eight, and they can count in time together, then what we start doing is replacing certain numbers with different actions. Okay, so um, as a class, we would we would do this and go right one, two, three, but we, let's say we've replaced number six to a clap. So it'd be one, two, three four, five, seven, eight. And as I'm sure you can imagine, you can start making this more and more difficult and say um, you then put a stomp on number two, a clap on number six, and a um, pat on your head as number eight. So it'd be one, three, four, five, seven, one. Okay, and it, as you keep going, you, you build up this whole new routine and everybody just needs to be standing in their space. So whatever the weather's like, it doesn't matter how cold it is or how, how small your, your classroom is, if they can all stand up, they can all do this. So the second one is pretty much running a gymnastics lesson within your classroom. So the restrictions are obviously gonna be little equipment and no space. But in gymnastics, a lot of the time we're focusing towards being able to build a routine. So there's nothing saying that in a group of three, just working in a small space, between three of us, we can't create a routine using our shapes, using our balances and different ways to travel. So one thing you could do as a teacher is you could say, right, we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to perform your routines. I wanna see three different shapes and your shapes are gonna be tuck shape, star shape, um, straight shape, pike and straddle. So you can use those five. So you've got to choose three of them. They also, you also wanna see one way of travel and you want to see um, two balances. Okay, so in the fr in their freeze in a very small space, they have to create a routine um, using that. So it might be that they're going to stand on one foot to start with, and then they're going to get all move into a star, a star shape. And depending on what level you're working at, it might be you can start introducing cannon, which is when one person goes and the second person follows and the third person follows. So let's say one person does a star jump, then the second one does a star jump, then the third one. Um, or you might be working in unison. You could talk about mirroring, uh, balances and counterbalances. There's lots of things you can bring in, even though you don't have all the space in the world and lots of mats and stuff like that. But you, you're just working around the space you have in your classroom, you can definitely get through a whole gymnastics lesson, working on those different topics and building into a routine, Demonstrating showing the classes, showing the, each half of the class, the routines that they've made, collecting feedback, all that sort of stuff works really, really well. So the second one is hand tennis. Now I love this game and I've done this a number of times with my uh, groups. And this is basically, you just get a piece of paper, just scrunch it up, right? and then you've got a improvised tennis ball. We're using our hand and rather than just like trying to get a rally straight away or trying to play a match or something, you can really go into some detail with this. And it, for example, you might be going into, you might be saying about the forehand, right? We're going to really learn the forehand today. And about opening up, stepping forwards, and if a partner's throwing it and they're they're hitting it back to them, partners then working on their catching skills as well. This the the piece of paper is not going to cause a lot of damage in your classroom. It's very easy to use. You know, you're most likely going to have it available in your classroom. Just scrunch it up, and there it is. It's a tennis ball, and you can work on your forehand. You can work on your backhands. Start working on rallies. You're going to be hitting coordination, teamwork, um, throwing and catching skills. And they're all skills which are relevant and educational within the classroom. And again, children are going to be benefiting from something rather than just sort of sitting on the side or like not really going ahead with it with an educational PE lesson because the spaces aren't available. So that works really well. And next up, I'm going to show you three different games which are maybe less educational, but really fun. And the kids are going to love it and you keep them really entertained for the whole lesson. So um, the first one is elephants football. Okay, so now with elephant football, all you need is a, a small soft ball. And what everybody does is they stand in a circle and their feet are touching the person next to them. So like if I was stood there, 
with my legs open. The next person would sat, um, stand next to me with their legs open, okay, and so on and so on around the whole um, circle. So you have 30 children in a circle, legs open, and the, with your legs open, that is your goal that you have to protect. Okay, But there's a, let's say you're using a tennis ball, children have to try and push the tennis ball in between other people's legs. So they're, they're protecting their legs, but also trying to hit the ball for other people's legs. Um, good thing with this is if you do it, don't, if, if they are, if they lose, if the ball goes through their legs, rather than making them sit down and they're out, just give them like five lives so they're constantly going to be in it um, and they're engaged. And you could honestly do this for so long with, um, with children. They love it. It's a really good game. Um, make sure you, you ensure it's safe the whole time. So one thing that will happen is maybe they'll start picking the ball up and trying to like throw it. So just say you've got to hit it. So you've got to be like patting the ball. Um, and also they might start leaning forwards and breaking the circles, just making sure that the feet are always touching. Uh, but yeah, it works really well. Kids will be really, really entertained. And you could, however, however you want, you could just set up like three different circles with 10 children in each or one big circle, whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, works really well. So my next game, instead of elephant football, it's called crab football. And it's quite different to elephant football. Crab football is actually where children have to, they can move around. They're basically playing a football match, but they have to move around on their hands and legs, you know, their belly facing the, um, facing up. Okay, So they're moving around like a crab, which means it's really slow, which is great for um, trying to manage the, you know, the energy in the session inside, making sure people aren't running around. And all you do is you just put, maybe um, some, some chairs as the goals and children put them in teams of three or four and they, they play and yeah, they're trying to kick the ball into the other team's goals, but they have to be staying like a crab the whole time. So it is, uh, it depends on the space you've got and how many children you've got. So be aware of that one, but if you've got this, a suitable space, it works really well and children will love it and it's, it's a good fun game. And finally, going back to a more sort of dance, sort of drama game, which is called Zip Zap Boing. So it's Zip Zap Boing. All right. And um, the way it works is you stand in a circle and everyone will have their hands like this. So we say in a circle. Now, if I say zip I, and I zip the imaginary energy that way, then the person next to me will have just received the energy that way. Now, they can either go zip and pass the energy on that way, or they can say zap and pass it back this way, okay? But if they said zap and push that way, then they would lose a life, okay? Because zip is going with the energy, zap goes back from where it came from, and then boing goes to the other, you can go boing Stephanie, and then it just, you, and you can boing the energy to the other side of the, of the circle, and Stephanie then has the, um, the energy, and she can decide where it goes from there. So again, if I was on this side and somebody, said zip and pass the energy on to me this way i could say zap and then give the energy back to them they then might say zap again and bring it back to me and then i could go zip and pass it around so zip goes with the energy zap comes back and again you might want to do this in three different groups or you know five different groups or you can do it as one big group whatever works for you working on the space zip zap boing Again, one of them games that will easily get you through 15, 20 minutes and maybe even more than that and the kids will love it. So, yeah, um, there's three different sort of fun games that I finished on, but also three, three games which are a bit more educational and beneficial to the children in terms of their PE. So hopefully they've, uh, they will help you. Uh, you're probably watching this video today because you're about to go do a session in, in a classroom. So good luck in your session if that is the case. And let me know how you get on. Please do like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.